welcome back to another episode of Guitar Talk with Todd here at Todd BB Music. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. You know I appreciate it. I've always got everything guitar going on here. Artist interviews, lessons, product reviews, and guitar reviews, which is what I'm doing today. Uh, please find us on Facebook at Todd BB Music. Today we are checking out a H150 from Heritage Guitar in Kalamazoo, Michigan. You guys know how much I love Heritage. We've had many, many of their guitars here featured on this channel, on this show. So uh, go ahead and search through the videos there. We've got tons of Heritage Guitars we've reviewed. A private owner brought this one in today. This is a beautiful 1994 Heritage H150 in uh, antique cherry burst is what they call this. This is actually what they call the H150 CM, which had the you know what we refer to as the curly maple top here. Got a lot of uh, familiar things that were going on with Heritage in the early 90s, late 80s. Uh, we got Schaller hardware basically going on here. Rosewood fingerboard, trapezoid inlays, the Heritage Rover tuners. Just a beautiful example from that era. Uh, real quick, again, search for Heritage videos all over this channel. I talk about their history and stuff every time I do one. But Heritage Guitars did form, kind of started going about 1984. Uh, officially got off the ground in 1985. Uh, former Gibson employees when Gibson moved to Nashville there in the mid 80s and they stayed behind and formed Heritage Guitar. They're still going strong there in Kalamazoo, Michigan today so make sure you check them out. They still make the H150. This is you know definitely probably one of their flagship models if you had to pick one. And uh, they're made a little bit different than they were back then, but still just awesome, awesome instruments. Uh, again, this has the shallower pickups in it, which were real common for the time. These days, you pretty much see Heritage using, you know, Seymour Duncan. I know they have a run of their own that they're starting to do as far as H150 goes. They're doing the custom core model, which is huge right now. This is being recorded in December of 2022. And uh, But back in the day, 1994, the company was coming up on about 10 years old right around that time. And so they were still considered relatively new and shallower hardware is pretty much what you saw in all that stuff that was coming out of Heritage if you have one or run across run from the 80s early 90s shallower hardware was huge Grover tuners always pop up on uh, it's even to this day on Heritage guitars so you'll see those a lot um, the shallower pickups sound great on these. I love them. They have a very bassy. I've got the tone all the way up here on the neck pickup. And it's still just very bassy. And I can even cut that back a little bit more. So even doing lead stuff there on that neck pickup. I'm going to really crank and let her turn her loose here when I play a little bit in a while. Right now I've got her kind of on a little bit more mellower of a setting here. Like I said, these shallower pickups, I, I love them. Uh, shallower pickups are kind of, especially anyone dealing with heritage, 
it's a love or hate thing. I, I, I meet a lot of people and it's very common that you'll find these models um, from this era and the pickups are torn out, hardware has been replaced. A lot of people don't care for the shallower stuff, but the pickups are huge that you'll see getting swapped out. I've never had a problem with the shallower stuff. Uh, like I said, I think these sound incredible. I almost want to say, and again, everything is subjective, certainly in the guitar world, but uh, a lot of that stuff becomes trendy and everybody just starts doing it because it's the thing to do, which I never really got. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why it's you know so important to have what everybody else has. You know, it's kind of cool to have something that's different. Um, you know, just like in the 80s, the big thing was, you know, tear out the humbuckers, put in those high-performance pickups, you know. You had the hot rod, everything had to be EMGs and hot rodded DiMarzio. Those are awesome pickups. I'm not saying they're bad, but that became a, a big, big trend. Get rid of those old humbuckers, get them out. And then it was funny because the 90s kicked in, a lot of that stuff started to come back. And then all the guys that had Les Pauls that had tore out those humbuckers were like, oh man, like what did I do? And then they were trying to get some to put back in. So it's like, you know, do what you want to do is my theory. <laughs> don't, don't just follow the trends. But anyway, I'm getting a little off the path here but um, and off topic. But what I'm getting at is I think a lot of people tear out shallower pickups because... For a while there, it was kind of like the thing to do. You know, you got to get those shallers out of there. I've always thought these sounded great um, on the uh, bridge pickup. Yeah, you know, you've got your t traditional more bite that you always would. Yes, I mean, it just, I've always liked these. Never had a problem with shallow or any of their stuff. I'm going to talk about the hardware and stuff a little bit uh, more here as we get some close-ups. In the case, like we always do, so let's go ahead and check her out here. The 1994 Heritage H150CM Curly Maple here in Antique Cherry Burst. Let's check her out in the case. Here we go. Okay, so here is the case for the Heritage H150 traditional the heritage case we've featured these on this show many times if you see that on a case you definitely know you have one of the older ones because they do not put that on the heritage cases these days in 2022 as of 2022 it just says heritage so if you have the heritage which i always loved because that's what the founding fathers of that company wanted when they started it in the mid-80s. And I was basically a nod to the Gibson, which is what Gibson originally had on all of their headstocks and whatnot when they first started in the you know late 1800s. And uh, so I thought that was kind of cool they did that. But anyways, let's open her up and get a look here inside the case. So there she is. All right, so like I was saying, this is described as the H150CM, which stands for Curly Maple. So you can see this is a maple top. It's got the curly figuring going on there in the maple with the grain. And then, of course, mahogany body, which you would traditionally have on an H150. Let's get some close-ups here of the shallower hardware that we were talking about earlier. Um... We have what's called the shallower roller bridge. I always loved these. Again, these just never really took off, and a lot of people swapped them out. And I don't really know why. This has individual saddles for each string, and you can, you know, intonate forward and backward like you do on a traditional, say, ABR1 or a Nashville-style two-pneumatic bridge. 
But also, uh, if you can see that there, these are on tracks, each saddle. So basically, you can roll it to the left or the right to line up with, you know, as you're coming in. I just thought that was a great, as you're coming in with the strings, is what I meant. <laughs> but um, I just thought that was a great design and uh, never really took off on these guitars, though. Uh, let's take a look at this. This is another great thing. This is the Schaller Quick Change Bridge, which really, this is a Rendell Wall invention. My friend Rendell invented the TP6, which was used on, you know, still is on the Gibson Lucille models. BB King loved that tailpiece, and um, Rendell Wall invented that, and this is basically a pretty much flat out copy <laughs> of of the tp6 without the tuners on it um and it's just a great thing that rendell came up with because you can basically just pop this in that's how bb used to do it he would tune up put the string on the head you know the post up here around the tuning pegs come down here with the string pop it right into there and then just finish tuning up you don't have it. it's just a really cool thing Rendell Wall, my friend there, we're going to give him full-on credit for that, as he so rightfully deserves. He's made the guitar community a better place for all of us. Uh, all right, there's those shallower pickups. You can always tell shallower pickups because they have the four adjustable screws as opposed to one on each side that you usually have. And again, late 80s. Early 90s, mid 90s, Schaller was all over the place on Heritage guitars, and these definitely are. And I think they sound fantastic. I love them. We've got the traditional Heritage pick guard. I'm trying to focus here. Not doing a very good job, but that's your traditional pick guard that we all know and love on Heritage guitars. Two volume, two tone, gold speed knobs there, all original stuff. Uh, rhythm treble with the three-way toggle switch. Rosewood fingerboard with the trapezoid inlays there. Um, I did a setup on this one, and I should have taken some pictures, and I did not. I cleaned this fretboard up for the person that brought this in. Um, it was pretty nasty <laughs> this thing has been around the block and then some but i cleaned that up and it looks great uh minor scratches and stuff here and there but nothing really that big plenty of fret life left nothing major there as far as frets wearing down there's your traditional the heritage headstock with the heritage truss rod cover let's flip her over here and take a look at the back Okay, so there's that mahogany body. Um, cavity control there to get into the toggle switch. I'm going to post, there is the um, cavity control to get into the volume and tone controls. I'm going to post, uh, I took this apart earlier, I'm going to put this on here where you could see on the flip side of that cover right there is the classic heritage stickers they always put on always open a heritage guitar if you have a solid body like this always take that uh cavity control plate off and look at it they had some cool things pretty much mid 90s they started using like uh looks like a scroll i'll try to post one of those up too one of the and and they would always write like the model the serial number and it's pretty cool because sometimes some of the guys would sign them You'll see like Marv Lamb's name in there or J.P. Motes or Rendell Wall, my friend. Any of those guys that, you know, you all, a lot of times you'll see they signed it when they worked on it. A lot of times they'll write down what pickups they originally put and it's really cool. But in the late 80s, early 90s, these white label ones were what they were going with. And they, as you can see here, it just says H150CM, again, for Curly Maple and the uh, ACB Antique Cherry Burst, which is also kind of called Vintage Cherry Burst. So if you see VCB, 
that's what that same thing really but um Anyway, so always check out the cavity control plate on a Heritage. If you have a hollow body or semi-hollow body, peek inside, you know, the F holes, and you'll see that same sticker inside. It's just kind of neat to see what they did and what they, like, wrote on there. It's always cool stuff. And they did that. That was huge in the 90s and late 80s there with Heritage. Okay, moving on up. Let's get a look at that. That's a style that heritage was using around that era for the strap locks it's like a little bit wider so that works out really well and it keeps the strap on quite a bit better than you know just a thinner strap lock would this one has been around the block a little bit i'm going to get some shots in the light when i flip her back over here but you can see that neck um Man, it, it hasn't been played a lot because it's got quite a bit of fret life left, and these are original frets, but whoever, <laughs> maybe they played in like a Sex Pistols tribute band or something, I don't know, but uh, man, they were beaten on this thing, whoever, it, it had some good nights or bad nights, I guess, depending on how you want to look at it. But um, that's all right, you know, it's natural relicking here, people pay for that stuff nowadays, and this is all the real deal relicking right here. Uh, all right, Grover tuners there coming up on the headstock, which are just a staple you see on many, many Heritage guitars. All right, let's take a look at the output jack here real quick, too. All right, so the reason I want to talk about this is they don't do this anymore. This, again, late 80s, early 90s Heritage. This was huge. This was how they did it. The jack was like recessed right into the body like that. Now, if you get an H150, it's got the, you know, plate and the jack on the outside like you traditionally would have on, say, like a Les Paul or something like that. Uh, but this is how they were doing it in 1994, which is what this model is. All right. So getting back here to the front, I'm holding this right now. Kind of getting some weird angles, but there you go. There's a nice gouge. Uh, there's a couple on this thing. I mean, it's it's been, you know, dinged up, and it's got its fair share of, of nicks and, and scratches and whatnot going on here, but not in that bad of a shape for 1994. I mean, you can't complain. You can see some of the oxidation going on there on, like, the tailpiece and the bridge and even on the pickups a little bit, but... Again, that's expected, and, and people are, are paying money to get that done now at the factory. <laughs> All right, let's get another full case shot of her here. All right, so there she is in the case once again. Just looking beautiful in the classic period correct case for this model. Again, made in 1994 at the Heritage Guitar Company in Kalamazoo, Michigan. All right, guys, so there she is in the case, looking beautiful. Let's take her for a test drive like we always do. Like I said, I'm going to play uh, something with like a rock backing track here, let her really turn loose, and then kind of mellow it down a little bit, do some slide and all that stuff like I usually do. Kind of get the full tonal spectrum here of what this awesome thing can do. So let's check her out. Here we go.
She is the 1994 Heritage H150 in antique cherry burst. Just a beautiful example here of what Heritage was doing in the early 90s. Uh, great, great stuff. I love this guitar. It's got a beautiful tone to it. Thank you once again to our private owner for bringing this in today for a review. Make sure you check out Heritage Guitars. They're still going strong today. As of 2022, right there in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, checking in, whatever, being with me today. Um, please comment below. Let me know if you have a heritage, if you've played a heritage, if you want a heritage. Let me know. And please, please, please hit that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner. You know I appreciate it. Uh, find me on Facebook at Todd BB Music. And join us again. We always have all things guitar going on here. So I appreciate you guys being with me. Stay safe and love your dogs. And we will see you again. Take care.